Hi, it's Leslie, Sister Wives. And it's the big gender reveal day. I know we've all been waiting for this, but uh, no, not really. We, we really don't care. Well, I don't really care. Boy, girl, girl, boy, 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 whatever. It's all good. But anyway, they're having a big gender reveal party on Zoom, of course, because that's how you do it these days. And because McKelty is basically like Switzerland, kind of gets along with everyone, except for one person, but kind of gets along with everyone, she wants Robin and Cody there on the Zoom call and takes you back to the Brady Bunch, don't you think? That's what it reminds me of. Anyway, so everyone's tuned in for the big gender reveal. And Robin has these hopes for the day. I'm hoping that them seeing Cody and I and our smiles and like our encouragement will help them to realize that I'm not the bad guy. Well, Robin, I hate to break it to you, but one little Zoom call is not going to erase the years of damage that's been done. So, but you know what? You got to give her an A for effort. But the one thing I've learned about Robin is um, there was not a lot of smiles. I was looking at her and, you know, she has what I've also been accused of having. She has a resting bitch face. Um, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but it certainly doesn't help the situation. Let me know what you think about it. But she was smiling later, so I'll give it to her for that. And what I thought was also interesting is we had a rare sighting of Logan. I want to say that's Janelle's son. It's been so long, I don't even know. But he was on the Zoom call with two other people. I think one of them was maybe a sister. I don't even know. But I was like, oh, wow, there he is. Because he's gotten out of Dodge long time ago. Long time ago, he saw this train wreck and he was like bolting. You know, had the foresight to exit left, if you will. But Kelty, you know, kind of like Switzerland, wants everyone to get along, wants to get along with everyone. But you know who wasn't on the call? That would be Mary. Because you know what? McKelty doesn't get along with Mary. I don't know what's wrong there, but you know what? She wants everyone to get along, get back together, but not Mary. We'll leave her out. And maybe it was just me, but you know, as they're all on the Zoom call and you kind of zone in on one of the little squares and there's Christine just like snuggling up to that cute little bundle Avalon, you know, on the call, like basically taking her old box, snuggling her. And I'm like, that's not missed on me. I mean, she knows Cody's watching this and it's like, she's like, I won, you know, I won everything here. I mean, Cody really doesn't have much contact. But anyway, let's press on. You know, Christine, she has found her voice as we know, and she makes it very clear about how she feels about getting back together with everyone. I'm not interested in getting back together again for something yet. All I'm going to be is cordial. I would love to say I'm going to be more, but I'm not. And I'm not interested in that either. Anyway, once again, we're going to talk about Mary for just a little bit. I'm ever perplexed of this of this clothing business that supposedly supports her. But you know what? Never say never, you know. And Mary gets to ponder a question that I can bet pretty much all of us have never had to ponder. She has to ponder this. When Cody and I got married, we made a promise to each other. God was involved. It was a very spiritual thing. Our plans were to be married for eternity. How much is this eternal covenant worth to me? Well, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say it's worth a whole lot of nothing. I mean, and maybe that's just to me and that's insensitive, but eh, I think it's worth nothing. I'm just going to digress a minute here because someone on my videos writes these cool lyrics to songs which are ever so meaningful about what's what's happening, you know, week to week in this crazy sister wives drama. But I have to just say when I told when you th when this happens, you know, this like married for eternity stuff, I mean, eternity is a friggin' long time, you know. You're if you're happily married for 10 years, you're winning, you know. Marriage is hard. Anyway, eternity friggin' impossible. But anyway, it takes me back to that meat. Just give me a minute. It takes me back to that Milo song, you know, like, um, be with her to the end of time, you know, and then he starts singing, uh, you know, I'm praying for the end of time. Hurry up and run. Anyway, it just, meatloaf. if you don't know it, I'm probably showing my age, but that song says it all because you know what? Eternity. Too friggin' ass long. But anyway, but that's it for Mary. Very slow news day on the Mary scene. Thank God, because we really don't care, actually. But Janelle, we're happy to see, is kind of broadening her horizons, and she goes up to Christine, and I guess Christine's like got her brother lives in the country, and they ride ATVs. I guess that's what it's like out there. It sounds beautiful. I'm not in that kind of beautiful place. I'm in a congested place. But anyway, um, enough of my problems. But Janelle goes up there riding ATVs. It was really cool, you know, and then at one point, uh, Janelle and Christine have a, have a ride in the car, and, and Janelle kind of lets Christine know, know where she's at with Cody. Like I've had to really think about this because I'm like, you know, obviously my marriage is not good. 
I, I don't think I really even am married anymore. Cody and I really haven't had the official conversation, but I haven't seen him in, like, he hasn't been in my house in, like, ten months or something. That doesn't and sound like you're married. No. Christine's expressions are too freaking funny. She's like, Janella's like, oh, yeah, obviously our marriage is not good. And Christine's like, no. And then she's like, she hasn't seen him or at her house in 10 months. Where did 10 months go? I mean, we're in one season of this TV show. Where did 10 months? I thought he was just over. I'm so confused because he was just over to that apartment. I don't know. I don't know. But that was really. But Christine is just like sitting there like biting her tongue because she just wants to laugh and go like, oh, you know. But she has to be respectful so she's quiet and then we had one of these other like kind of hidden meanings which are so meaningful with cody and he, i guess he was trying that little sports car he's always driving around which always bothered me because he gets the cute little sports car and the wives are like driving like the truck which you know is his truck because what she don't want a truck i don't know it just bothers me he had this cute little sports car whatever he's trying to put it in a trailer didn't have enough thought to measure both ways and it doesn't fit and he gives this other insightful and meaningful quote. I've spent most of my life as this polygamist trying to constantly fit um, square pegs into round holes. It's just no I've forced things to fit rather than going, is this a fit? I've had to learn through my experiences in plural marriage that the square peg is not a good idea to f pound into the round hole. That would be right, Cody. And boy, does that just like kind of sum this whole mess up because this all, all this shit doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. You and Robin can fit, you know, trying to work in with this other stuff. No, they're all squares. You're round. No, they don't fit. But anyway, Janelle, you know, as if we didn't know, makes it abundantly clear that she does not want Cody back. No, yeah, no, I'm not at all interested in reconciling with him oh, at all. Okay, okay. So like Janelle is full on talking about leaving Cody at this point. This is full on leaving. And it sounds like she's just, this is what Christine thinks. And there seems to be some logic to this, that Christine thinks that Janelle's just hanging around because she's basically screwed herself because she has no legal rights to what is actually hers because she didn't protect herself. And now, you know, 2020 is hindsight. She wishes there were laws to protect these, you know, second, third, and fourth wives and everything. Um, but there's not, you know. And she needed to protect herself and she didn't. I guess she's hanging around trying to make nice to try to get whatever she can out of this because she basically put all this time and has nothing to show for it. And she needs to start over now. And I don't know if there's a show out there for just an ex-sister wife alone, but you never know. I would watch, you know me, I watch this stuff. <laughs> so she's in a pickle, Janelle, but you know what? She'll be fine, she'll be fine. I'm, I'm confident, she's a smart girl. But anyway, you know, this this part was actually very interesting to me when they talked about, you know, seeing Cody and just divine intervention hit you that, oh my God, I need to marry this man. Okay. Um, he was cute. I'll give him that. But whatever. They all felt that he, they needed to be married to him. And Christine was no different. I guess uh, she talked about when she was 17, because she grew up in this polygamous life. And she, she dreamed of like, oh, I can't wait to be a third sister wife. And I'm like, I'm like, hashtag goals, why not be number one? Why not be the first sister wife? You know, like, why don't you wanna be the best one? I don't know, it was just weird to me. But you know what, everybody has their own dreams. And I, it, there is some wonderful part, I guess, with the, if you have this happy family with all the kids getting along, just the, the relations between the parents, it just can't freaking work. But the kids theoretically could work. So that's the happy part. But I guess she had, she had dreams of doing this. So she lived out her dreams, good for her. And now she's living out her other dream, very good for her. But anyway, I follow this nonsense every week. So if you want to follow along, please subscribe. See you next week. Bye.